been talking about it. The Spurs are getting a couple of days to rest and work on some things on the Capitol Performance Center practice court. Like, not turning it over so much and just getting a win. Hey, the Spurs lost Tuesday 123-87 to to OKC in OKC. They're six lost in a row, dropped them to 3-8 and eight on the season, 0-2 in the NBA in-season tournament. The Spurs going through a pretty tough patch right now, and they're doing their best, even with some practice time, to fight through this thing. You know, just keep pounding the rock. Keep pounding the rock. Um, I feel like we're going to... We're doing a good job. We're doing everything. We do everything right. You know, we just have to do some things better. Um, you know, come out the game stronger, stuff like that. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna be all right. You know, when we get in the huddle before games, you know, we're talking to each other about that. You know, don't come out slow. You know, you know, like Jetty said, just just strike first, strike first. So that's what we've been trying to do. Um, and, you know, we're we're getting better at it. All right. So you can see the attitude is right now. They just gotta have that attitude transfer onto the court for some like better play and mm -hmm. some wins we're ready for wins yeah they got the they got the kings friday night so kings <sighs> are tough this year too we'll see they're all tough frostbite <laughs> for this true. team right now they are all right they're gonna get better all right it is a way to honor our fallen veterans wreaths often adorn graves at fort sam houston national cemetery around this time of the year but many may not get a wreath this holiday season so we're going to show you a way you can help. And coming up today, new at five, medical credit cards are one option for those of you trying to pay off some hospital bills and other health care debts. But some financial experts say the side effects of the extremely high interest rates could put you in a worse position. The warnings you should know before you sign up for one of those medical credit cards today at five on Entertain after entertainment tonight. A Texas inmate convicted of strangling a five-year-old girl taken from an El Paso store, then burning her body nearly 22 years ago, now set to be executed in Texas this evening. 53-year-old David Renteria was condemned for the death of Alexandra Flores. Prosecutors say Alexandra was Christmas shopping with her family at a Walmart store when she was abducted by Renteria. Her body was found the next day. He has long claimed that members of a gang had forced him to take the girl by making threats to his family and that it was the gang members who killed her. However, officials told a different story and the jury believed it. He will be the eighth inmate in Texas to be put to death this year. Bethlehem has canceled its yearly Christmas display that is according to the Telegraph. It's reporting that it's happening due to honor, quote, Palestinian martyrs, end quote. All this amid that ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas. People in southern Gaza say Israel forces dropped leaflets warning Palestinians to flee. That signals a possible expansion of Israel's operations in the air and on the ground. A protest turned chaotic outside of the Democratic National Committee offices in Washington, D.C. last night. Pro-Palestinian demonstrators calling for a ceasefire forced the evacuation of several lawmakers. It was a protest Capitol Police say was illegal and violent, though the protesters dispute that. The organizers of the event said they had wanted to block the entrance to the building in order to force Democratic lawmakers to encounter their vigil. The lawmakers were inside having a campaign reception. Six officers were treated for minor injuries. One protester was arrested for assaulting an officer during that incident. President Biden and the president of China coming together on a number of crucial issues after their meeting yesterday. They agreed to open a presidential hotline, resume military to military communications and work to curb fentanyl production. This shows some progress after their first face to face talks in a year. The president met with a, the Chinese president for about four hours on the outskirts of San Francisco. They discussed issues that have been straining U.S.-Chinese relations. However, differences remain. Biden told reporters yesterday that he had not changed his view that President Xi is a dictator. And the Chinese president made a veiled warning that the consequences of not working with him would be dangerous. The Food and Drug Administration has approved the first home test for chlamydia and gonorrhea. It's called the Simple 2 test. It's manufactured by Let's Get Checked. The test will be available over the counter and no prescription is needed. Users will be able to activate the kit online and then fill out a questionnaire for health care providers to evaluate. Then they will collect a sample and send it off. The test results will be delivered online. 
A health care provider will follow up if the results are positive or if they are invalid. The American Heart Association taking race out of the equation for assessing heart attack risk. For years now, doctors have used certain demographic markers in determining if a patient is at risk of having a heart attack or a stroke. Those include age, sex, and race. But now the American Heart Association has a new tool that removes race as a factor. The change boils down to the modification of a widely used cardiac risk algorithm the scientists who changed it started out with the assumption that race by itself is not a good, appropriate clinical tool for medical decisions. Development still underway for an online calculator with the new algorithm. It is called Prevent. Outside with live cam, bit of a strange day. Half of us in sunshine, half of us in fog. To, well, some of us are always in fog. We're still half we're, of us in fog. <laughs> we're not talking about mental fog. Oh, but, but, no. Oh. Uh, but it, it uh, downtown, it looks like it's really trying to lift. Look, look at it go. What did it live right there on the air? Yeah, yeah. The sun is out now, and I think we're going to see that, a lot of that in San Antonio. And it's going to have an effect on the temperatures. Now, they, it kept the temperatures down this morning, so we're going to have to rebound some. I still think we may get up to around 70 or so today, but a little cooler than we initially thought, just because these clouds and fog, again, held the temperatures down this morning. We kind of we are wearing this graphic out, but it's uh, really helpful this morning when it comes to seeing where that cloud deck is and where it's headed. You can see now it's eroding back to the east. You've already got some breaks down closer to the coast. So this area here probably breaks up within the next couple of hours. And even places like Lavernia and Floresville, you'll see the sun too, although it will take a little bit longer. If you're west of San Antonio, sun is out and temperatures are already in the 70s. Uvalde, Del Rio, Carrizo Springs, Cotua. Uh, 50s though, New Braunfels where the clouds are holding on and 60 here in San Antonio at the moment. But you're going to see this number jump up pretty rapidly now that the sun is beginning to pop out. Our forecast today, 70 at 4 o'clock, 69 at 5 p.m., 68 at 6 p.m. And then look for us to fall into the 50s tonight. Pretty standard. It's where we've been the last couple days. Fog redevelops tomorrow morning. Probably have a warmer day on your Friday. Pretty nice weekend, but some changes definitely show up on Monday. Some very gusty winds. We're going to talk more about that here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. A nonprofit involved in laying wreaths on graves at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery, short on donations, and time to help is running out. You can make sure those who served are remembered. And show us your shoes. It's another reminder, we're sharing our shoes, the phone bank happening right now. If you'd like to donate shoes for children, just call the number on your screen. We are going to be checking in with that phone bank in just a minute or two to see how your donation can help. Profit working to make sure that children in our community have the shoes they need. And that is why Spatos is teaming up with SAPD and our KSAT community sponsors for a San Antonio phone bank. We're hoping to use the donations to boost the supply of shoes in the city for our kids. And David Sears is at that phone bank right now. Ursula, we're joined by Amanda again, and we got some great news. The phones have been ringing, the donations coming in. We've gotten $650 in donations, is that right? Yes, sir. And how, that relates to how many pairs of shoes? About 65 pairs of shoes. So we're just scratching the surface. Yes. We're just, ah, see, look at there. <laughs> see, all these volunteers, they need something to do. So let them answer the phone. That's why they came out here. Police officers and folks from Zapatas is here to answer the phone and take in some donations so we can get more shoes. We're looking for just gazillions of shoes because we got a lot of kids in San Antonio that need some shoes, correct? Yes, that is correct. You've been here a couple of years. Mm -hmm. What's it like when you hand a child a box of shoes and they open up that box? What's, oh, what's wow, the, what's it's, like it's, it's definitely beautiful. It definitely pulls out, uh, pulls, tugs at those little heartstrings of yours. Just seeing those beautiful kids, their faces light up. It's a beautiful thing to witness. And the volunteers are important and the substations for police officers are important. That's where they can take them. So tell us how these people can donate if they don't want to call the day and, and give us some money, yeah. which we, we would love money. But if you want to like take some shoes, where can you take them? Absolutely. So you can donate a pair of shoes at any substation, including headquarters. And uh, only today, only while supplies last, you will receive a voucher for two tickets to the Spurs game. Oh, wait, back up. Hold on. <laughs> Wimby Mania has hit share for the shoes. <laughs> Share the, share, share the shoes. Yes. Wimby Mania is all over. So, so today, today only, mm -hmm. you donate some shoes, you can get a voucher for two tickets to a Spurs game. Yes, sir, that is correct. Yeah. While supplies last. That's another reason why we love Wimby Mania. 
<laughs> right there. So, so keep the phones ringing. We've got uh, one lady right here doesn't have her phone ringing. So let's let's get after this. Here's the number three five one. There it is. 1363, and you can see on their desk, that, you know, not just shoes, but you can't wear shoes without socks. Because, you know, then your feet get all stinky, right? Yeah. You don't wear some socks? Yes. Right? So, so you don't correct. want that. So we need some socks, too. So donate some socks, donate some shoes, give us a call, and donate some money. Remember, we're up to 650 bucks, even more now, because we're taking more donations now. 60 pairs of shoes. We're looking for several thousand pairs of shoes this year. Ursula? I'm thinking 3,000. That's it, 3,000. Okay, live look outside, the sun getting brighter and brighter. The man with the socks, the socks story is here. Our oh, Justin yes. Horn. I do like socks. What you got today? No, what I forgot. Oh, uh, planets, solar oh. systems. <laughs> Hard to see. <laughs> They're there. I'm not that flexible. Uh, <laughs> anyway, 60 degrees so far today. 49 was a low this morning. Averages are 71 and 50. Uh, we'll see temperatures get up close to average this afternoon. Uh, but it's still a little bit of fog and cloud cover out there. We'll take another look at that. Uh, look ahead. Also, look at the drought monitor. Where do we stand after that rain we've seen recently? That's coming up. Kind of like a yama. Push me, pull me. Is it going or coming? Is it coming or going? It's hard okay. to watch the stock market. And it's the stock market. I was talking about the fog, too, though. Oh, yeah. I was about to say it's <laughs> acting a little like the weather. Yeah. Uh, I could apply to a couple things today. You're right. Um, yes, the fog is moving out. So we're going to say goodbye to that. Sun will pop out the rest of the afternoon. Turns into a pretty nice day, but an interesting morning, to say the least. Uh, we got the drop monitor in, too. Uh, it is Thursday, after all. I, honestly, I'm a little surprised by it. Uh, it shows that last week we were still in an exceptional drought here in Bear County. I want to show you this week now. So we're going to fast forward and notice not much changed. We got rain, but uh, apparently didn't make much of a difference here on what the, uh, the, the metrics that they use to come up with this uh, drop monitor. So we're still in need of rainfall. Look, we know that, but we're hoping maybe it would have been a little bit better than this. Uh, we do have some rain in the forecast, but it's a very, very small chance. Uh, as we go outside on Transguide, I want to show you some looks across the city. This is helpful to look and see where the fog is and where skies are cleared. I mean, you go out to 1604 Marbox, blue skies right now. Uh, some places still seeing, though, a little bit of lowered visibility. That's 1604 Medio Creek. Looks good there. Uh, 1604 Spurs Ranch Road. Uh, we're kind of on the periphery of the city here right now. Uh, let's go downtown. 35 at Cesar Chavez. Still a little bit of a haze, but the sun's out there, too. So uh, bottom line, improvement. Skies are clearing. We'll see blue skies the rest of today. Let me show you why we saw some of those clouds. We've got a big area of low pressure here in the Gulf of Mexico. Pinwheeling here looks pretty on satellite. Of course, unfortunately, this brought a lot of rain to parts of Florida. They had another little area of low pressure there last night. Caused some big issues in Miami. A lot of flooding, very strong winds. Still some rain across Florida right now. But on the backside of this low, you've got this deck of clouds raced west this morning and now it's kind of backing up a little bit but uh, the whole eastern i'd say third of the state is still underneath these clouds and san antonio has been sitting right on the edge of things with clearing now taking place now we go to another pinwheel this time out in the pacific this one spinning here this is the next system we're going to watch this energy pulls in across the united states as we get into early next week and this will be our next big front rain chances i mentioned those there are some small rain chances but i do mean small sunday a brief opportunity maybe in the afternoon and monday there is a small window for some showers and maybe a storm depending on when our front comes through and there's still some questions as to the timing of this front but what i can tell you first front and this is one that moves through tomorrow you're not going to notice it other than it will be a little bit cooler on saturday it's the system that comes out of the Pacific that brings the better, slightly better shot at rain. As we get into Monday, there's going to be a window there. If it holds off until the afternoon on Monday, we could see a shower or storm pop up. But really, the, the bigger takeaway from this, because even if we do see that, it's not going to produce much rain, the bigger takeaway is going to be the windy conditions. I think we'll get gusts out of the northwest 30 to maybe 40 miles per hour in some cases, and that'll be the, the case through Tuesday morning. So know that it will be windy and blustery on Tuesday, cooler. And then by Wednesday and Thursday, we clear out. And it's really nice for Wednesday and for Thanksgiving. Now, there will be some snow up across the Rocky Mountains and parts of the Great Lakes that could cause a few travel issues. But other than that, 
most of the country looks pretty good for Thanksgiving. 78 Friday, 72 Saturday, that's that little cool down. 74 Sunday, 77 on Monday before the front comes through, and then temperatures uh, drop about 15 to 20 degrees on Tuesday. 60 for a high, 64 Wednesday. And right now, Thanksgiving, calling for highs in the mid-60s with clear skies. We'll be right back. Right now, there is a call to honor the men and women who have served our country and are no longer with us. The night team's John Paul Barajas explains how to make sure they're not forgotten this holiday season. Walking down a row and there's wreath after wreath after wreath on a grave and all of a sudden it gets to the section or uh, where your loved one is buried and, and the gravestone is bare. And it feels like they're forgotten. That was the case for 75% of headstones at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery last Christmas. David Bolser with nonprofit Senior Veterans Incorporated is teaming up with the wreaths across America to make sure those who served are remembered. We get to celebrate things like Veterans Day and Thanksgiving and Christmas. And to do everything that we do on a normal day, we get to celebrate that and enjoy and that will be with our family and so forth because of what they've done. Bolser is calling on residents right here in Military City, USA to donate wreaths for the cemetery's 160,000 graves. But Matt Kostak with Wreaths Across America says right now, there's only enough to cover about 12,000. We'd love for this month to get, you know, 20 or 30,000 more uh, headstones covered. I'd love to see a quarter of the cemetery again this year filled. That would Covering 25% of those graves would require nearly $700,000 in donations. The time to help is running out. The donation deadline is November 28th. They understand uh, the sacrifices that all of the veterans and spouses have, have uh, gone through. You see a lot of tears out there, but you see a tremendous amount of, of respect uh, for the, the men and women who have served. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Reese across America expects around 5,000 volunteers to lay the Reese coming up on December 16th. And you can sign up to help. If you're interested in donating a wreath as well, we have a link on our website. All right, back downtown. Is Mike, is Mike still by himself? <laughs> no. No, Fiona, okay. No. Ooh. So. Thank um, goodness you showed up. <laughs> yes, uh, and just in time, apparently. Okay, we've got Hammer and Nails here, and Matt Thompson, Hi. owner, joins us. And facials are important for guys, right? And we've got one started here for Mike. Absolutely, we're taking care of Mike's skin right now. No shave November. We're keeping uh, the moisture in as he's growing out that beard and kind of getting things going for sure. Okay, we're going to talk more about why facials are important for guys and more about all the services there at Hammer and Nails. Perfect place to get mm -hmm. pampered, wait to hear what they have there. <laughs> then if you are going to grow this out, what is the, uh, the best design for facial hair? A beard, a mustache, a goatee, or nothing? Yes, so go ahead and scan that QR code and weigh in right now. Beard is at 49%. A lot, a lot of people <laughs> like that. I'm, I, I don't know. I'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks. All right, time for the cuteness. Not yes. this, over no. here. <laughs> God's Dogs is here, and look at those two little ones. Boy, there is definitely uh, a problem with adoptable dogs and people dumping dogs and all that stuff. We're going to tell you all about that. Okay, and Adina Anderson joins us with some great Thanksgiving Day ideas to make it less stressful. What is this one? <laughs> this is an easy way to make an individual pumpkin pie for everybody. I'm going to show you how quick and easy this is. Love that. <laughs> okay, and David Hurtado takes us to a fabulous antique shop and shows us around. I'm going to continue my facial after this. 